When you open Repetier for the first time, you'll see some default object on the on the build deck. It will look something like this, but not exactly like this. Because we're not interested in that in that model, you can delete that that model, that object on the build deck, and then go to load and load your model that you would like. For example, this table. With the rotate view, you can rotate around. With your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out in normal ways. And if you don't have a mouse wheel, you can use the zoom button to move in and to move out by moving your clicking and moving your mouse up and down. You can actually move the object around if you would like to. And notice over here the position of your object changes its X and Y coordinates. It's usually best to center the object before you get ready to print. So if you press the center object button, it will do that for you. So before I show you how to slice the object for 3D printing, let me show you um, some things that could go wrong. For example, this is a table that I've intentionally made improper by adding this big gap here. So for an object to be 3D printable, it needs to be what's called a manifold or it needs to be what's called watertight. So if you were to fill this table with water, the, the water would leak out through this hole here, and that means that it will not be 3D printable and you'll get errors. So obviously if there's a hole here, you need to fix it. But maybe you don't realize that there's a hole. Maybe the hole is tiny and you can't see it. Let me show you how that is rectified here. So first we kill the, the object that's on our deck. And let me load the bad object. Let me load the bad table. And there you can see our gap. Just like it was before. And you'll get this error message which says the object is not a manifold. The easiest way to fix this is just to fix the re click on the repair button. It repairs it for you and it's done. Sometimes it cannot do that and you'll have to revert back to your CAD design and then fill that gap yourself. I guess let me let me actually pause here and just tell you that this table is is perfectly placed for for 3D printing. The big flat part is on the deck and the the legs are sticking up. What you'll sometimes see, and I should also mention that you can we can rotate this table by clicking on the rotate object button here. We can rotate the table around. We can rotate the table in the y direction along the y axis, and you can see the axes are here. You can also rotate the table along the x axis. Sometimes your object will be placed on the deck like this, and this will not print very well. The legs will print fine, but when it starts to print this long flat table here. Remember the filament that's coming out is very hot plastic so when it comes out it's going to droop down and will form these catenaries and so your table is going to be very bowed here in the middle. Short distances it can connect but this is a very long distance and your table will not be flat. So what you want to do is just make sure that your, your big flat objects are on the deck and then your small objects are up in the air like that. So when we get ready to print, we have to first slice it. So in Repetier, you click on the Slicer tab here. The default slicer is Cure Engine. I prefer Slicer, so choose Slicer. And for this, we're going to have to make some settings. Here, I've already got my print settings set for myself and for the Georgical printer and for the Georgical filament. And I'll show you how to make your own settings for you at home. Before you do that, first we have to do the printer settings, or you don't have to, but you can do this anytime. We're going to choose the printer settings. And the connection is if you have the computer connected to the printer, we're going to ignore this, but these are my settings here. The printer setting is also something I'm just going to default to. I'm not going to change any of these values. But in the extruder, we see a few things here. The max extruder temperature, you might want to set to something like 220 degrees, which is higher than what you want, but it's not crazy high. And the same with the bed temperature, I set it to 70 degrees. These are both Celsius. 
The first thing you really have to change, perhaps, is your extruder number one diameter. So if you watched the previous video, you should be able to tell me what is the diameter of our extruder, and you should type that in now. If you did it properly, then you should have typed in 0 0.4 millimeters as the diameter of the nozzle. We can click on the printer shape, and here we also have to fill in some things. The minimum X is zero. The maximum X will be the, the width of your build plate, and you should know that as well if you watched the previous video. The Y max is also the width of the build plate, and the print area width and the print area depth are also the uh, same numbers. You can use the same numbers for all of these. So fill these in now, and if you did it right, then you told me 220 by 220, and then we'll, we'll just assume that we can go out to the very edge. You probably don't want to build to the very edge, but it's possible to do right now. The print area height is only 100 millimeters. That's about 10. That's exactly 10 centimeters. And that could be increased a little bit, but these aren't designed for really tall prints. And so 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters is a pretty good place to stop. The scripts, there's nothing here. And the advanced, there's nothing here that you need. So when you're done with that, just make sure everything is good and press OK. Next, we want to change these print settings and printer settings. You probably have some kind of default setting here, and we need to set it up exactly for our printers. So if you press the configuration button, it will take a second or two to open. Just give it some time. And when it does, you can see here that these are the settings here that you're going to be able to manipulate. And you can choose a drop-down setting. These are all the ones that I've created. And press the little the wheel to enter the print settings. And here we're not going to change anything on the print settings. We're going to use probably what is the default measurements. If uh, these aren't the default measurements, then go ahead and change them to whatever mine are. So the layers and perimeters, the first layer height is 0.3, uh, uh, sorry, the layer height is 0.3, and the first layer height is 0.35. We like to do, I like to do uh, three perimeters on our vertical shells, which makes the walls thick. And then I like to make the top and the bottom also have three solid layers, which makes it nice and firm. The infill, you can change this depending on what you want to do. 10% is probably all you need, and the honeycomb pattern is a typical pattern that, that is good to use. If you want to make something like an LED fob, you might want the fill density to be 0%. Or if you want something to be very, very solid, to make it 30% or 50%. Um, it's probably not necessary to make it 100% filled. 30% is really, really solid. The skirt and brim. Around your object, it's kind of nice to make a little skirt so that your filament starts flowing nicely. I usually do three loops, and I send it five millimeters from the object. And I only do one height of the skirt. I would recommend not using support materials if you can if you can get away with it. So I'm going to skip to the speed, and these are the speed settings, which are pretty much the default settings that are given to you. All right? And those are all the settings I'm going to look at here with the print settings. If I go back to platter, I can now choose the filament settings. Click on the, the wheel. Okay. And we go to filament. So here we had some problems or not some problems, but some things that need to be changed. For example, the diameter. The diameter of our filament is not zero millimeters. If you watched the previous videos, you should know what the diameter of our 3D filament is, our PLA filament, and type that in now. You should have typed in 1.75. Similarly, the first layer of the extruder has a temperature of a certain value, and all these other layers as well. And the, the bed, the heating bed, the, the deck, the build plate also has a first layer temperature and I, all other layer temperatures. Fill these in now if you've watched the previous video, and you should have typed in this. The first layer is a little bit warmer. 
The extruder is where the plastic comes out and melts. And then the bed temperature at the beginning needs to be 65 and all other is 60. The hotter the bed is, the more the stickier uh, the filament will be, and that's kind of nice to, to keep it nice uh, and sticky on the deck. And that's all we're going to look at on this setting. We go back to platter, and when then we finally we choose the printer settings. We're going to ignore these here. Just go straight to the extruder. And then here the last thing we have to change is the nozzle diameter of our extruder. So this is the tiny hole that the, that the filament will come out, the hot filament squeezes out of. So what is the uh, nozzle diameter here that says the default is 0.5? You type in what you think it should be if you've watched the videos for the George Gold printers. Hopefully you typed in 0 0.4, which is correct. At this point, you can save, and you can change the name here if you would like to. You could change the name to whatever profile you want. It could be your name. I would recommend it be something, but the word printer should be in this profile name, because this is the printer setting. Click on filament. The next setting here should be demo. I mean, it should be filament. It should have the name filament, because this is the filament settings. And the print here. Uh, these settings here should have the word print in it because these are the print settings. And now we are done. We can close this window. And then we can make sure if it doesn't automatically pop up there, we can make sure that we choose the new settings that you've just created. And now we're ready for slicing. So the slicer is going to take these settings and then slice the object according to, to your desires. Make sure that it says demo, or make sure it says whatever you, whatever the print settings, printer settings, and extruder filament settings are set properly, and then press this big button, slice with slicer. It'll take a few seconds, it will slice, and then you'll get another view right here. The print preview view will be open like so. I like to show the layer range here. And again, your zoom feature works and your rotation feature works with your mouse wheel and your mouse button. And then you can walk through your first layers and your second layers all the way up like so. I would absolutely positively make sure that there is nothing on the zero layer, but then you have something on the first layer. If your object is floating on the deck, your first layer will not be visible here and you'll be printing your object in midair and it will not stick to the deck. So make sure that your first layer looks like something like this. And you can see here this is the this is the little skirt that we were talking about. It makes a little line around the object uh, just again to get the filament flowing. And then you can build it up one layer at a time if you want. And you can kind of zoom in and see what happens. If you want to hold the shift key down and then move your mouse, it will move like a hand tool. And you can see what the layers look like. I can scroll in and out. And you can see that little honeycomb fill. This is what 10% looks like. And again, that is really solid. Once you are sure that your 3D model looks decent and doesn't have gaps and is going to sit nice on the deck in the right orientation, you're ready to export this for printing. Before that, you should see that this table will take 3 hours and 52 minutes, um, and we'll use this uh, um, amount of filament, which is kind of cool to see that, and we'll take 267 layers, each, each layer being a layer of plastic. When you get ready to export for printing, you want to save for SD print. You can save it to a file if you want to, but this is better. Uh, save for SD print. This is your SD card printing. If you do this, especially if you're in a school situ situation, school setting, and you print with SD, when the print is done, it will turn off the heating element on the extruder, and it will turn off the heating element on the deck. And so the uh, printing in this way will uh, just in ensure that when the print is done that the deck gets cold and gets cool, and so you, especially in a school, like I said, 
it's just safer um, in that way. So press this. I include the start and end and the job finishing commands, which are just default commands. You can put these this file anywhere you want. Make sure you understand where it is, and then just name it. Table demo. And notice that it's going to be a .gco, which is short for G-code. But it doesn't say .gcode, it just says .gco. If it's .gco, then you know you've used the save for sdprint command. So you press save, and then it's done. It's ready for you to put onto an SD card, an actual physical card, and then move it over to the printer for printing. Just to show you what happens if you press the save to file, you see it's it's with the .g code extension. Okay, so uh, I would I would not use the .g code, but rather the .gco that you get from the SD card. Already, and then all that's left to do is to print, which will be in the last video.